All praises to the Most High in Christ. Most High in Christ, bless everybody. Most High in Christ, bless you too. Great. Bringing us here again, fellowship in the spirit of the Most High in Christ. Learning the commandments. Praises to Yahweh Shai. That's the Savior of Israel. Okay, so Mark 14 and verse 3. The precious ornament where the Lord and Savior had commanded the children of Israel to wherever the gospel shall be preached that this good deed that she had did for the Lord will be spoken upon her for a memorial. And it's only right that we give that credit to the sister and the praise to the Most High Christ for giving her the spirit to do so. So uh, it's Mark 14 and verse 3. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he said at me, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ornament of spike, one very precious, and she laid the box, I'm sorry, and she broke the box and poured it upon his head. And there was some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this place of the ornament made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor, and they murmured against her. And Christ said, let her alone, why shall be her, for she hath brought the good work, for ye have the poor with you always, and whatsoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye not have always. For she hath done what she could. She has come afore to anoint the body, my body, to the burial of soul. She had did that precious thing to the Lord, for the Lord. And the Most High had some compassion and had her to uh, bring him some bit of comfort. And, and soothe this spirit as well as the flesh, okay? So from there, let's go to St. John 10, okay? And Christ through the spirit is going to be trying to tell us the spirit that we should be walking in. And as well as uh, the area that we should hear. Let's see, I didn't get all of it. Mark 14 and what is that? The recorder. Did you hear the recorder? No, I didn't. I get it. I thought you had it. Mark 14 and verse 9. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever the gospel shall be preached out the whole world, this also shall be done, that she have done shall be spoken of a memorial unto her. So that's it. So St. John 10. St. John 10 and 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entered not in, that entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbed up some other way, the same as it be from robber. So let's, let's examine something, what Christ is trying to tell us about dealing with the children of Israel and dealing with the sheep that he had appointed us to be, what, apostles and prophets and teachers and ministers and preachers and, and disciples and all of that and the gifts that he gave us. So he said, we can't climb up some other way. The only way is to what? Come through him. But he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Okay. So what are we supposed to do with the sheep? The same thing that Christ had told people. He said, feed the sheep. You love me, do what? Feed the sheep. He said, Thou knowest, Lord. He said, Do what? Feed my sheep. Okay. So if you enter in through, <clears throat> through the door, then you are a shepherd. So it's to him to pour the opening and the sheep hear his voice. Okay. So a lot of Israel be wondering, like, why ain't, the, why ain't the children of the Most High? Why ain't they hearing the voice? Now you're saying, Well, I'm coming out the scriptures and I know I'm telling them. What's right? Well, as we get into this lesson, hopefully the most high through Christ kind of show you the problem with not hearing, why they don't hear the voice. And he called his own sheep by name and leaded them out. And he put it them forth. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he go up before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. So we as uh, followers of Christ, we know the voice of Christ. What is the voice of Christ? It's the Bible. And regardless of who's speaking the word of the Most High, who the scripture's coming out from, that ain't gonna matter. Because it's Christ's voice that's being translated unto us. And a stranger would they not follow. So the children of Israel, they're not gonna follow a stranger. 
They're not going to follow a strange doctrine, a strange teaching. They're not going to follow nobody else. They're not going to wander off. None of those things. But we'll flee from him. For they know not the voice of a stranger. Okay? For they know not the voice of strangers. Then spake, this parable spake Christ unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he had spake unto them. So Christ is teaching and talking to the people and as well as his disciples, but they didn't understand. Then said Yahweh shine to them, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door. See, I am the door of the sheep. All that so ever, all that ever came before me were these and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Understand this, the men that teach the word of the Most High we got to make sure that <clears throat> our intentions behind teaching the scriptures is sincere. Our intentions of, after teaching and following the, of Christ is not after our own mind. Because if it's not after Christ, then what are we going to be labeled? The thief and the robber. What does the thief do when he come in? He don't care. He's going to come in and do what he want to do. So if you have that mentality to where you really don't care, you're going to be doing what you want to do, how you want to do it. Okay? And what's going to happen? The sheep ain't going to hear you. Just like it says, but the sheep did not hear them. Verse 8. Okay. No, verse 9. I, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go, go in and out and find pasture. So while, we, while we're being revived and recruited, born again to follow the Most High, the Most High regenerating Israel, while that's been happening, what has to happen? We have to enter in through that door into the sheepfold. And that door, we have to learn about Christ, we have to put the most high in Christ first. Anything that pertains to the flesh, pertains to the world, the work, works of the flesh, the lusts of the flesh, you got to do away with that. Because if any inkling, if any blemish, if you still attach to any blemish, it's a wrap. It's going to spread rapidly like wildfire. It's going to spread like, like a plague inside you. You open up yourself to spirits. That's why Christ said that he is that door. And by him, if any man enter in, then you will be saved. But if you don't enter in by Christ, then you won't be saved. Verse 10, the thief coming not, but for the steal. See, you might think, well, I ain't going to take nothing. You know what? You know what you still what's inside the sheepfold? Sheep. So Satan will use you to come inside the sheepfold and if you're not being sober, what are you going to end up doing? Stealing the sheep. Or at least trying. Killing. How are you going to end up killing? Because you're going to have a spirit of hatred, which is a conspiracy. I mean, sorry, which is a confused spirit. You wonder why you hate brothers, you hate sisters, sisters hate other sisters. That's because you didn't, you're not dealing with Christ according to the Bible. You're only dealing with Christ based on your emotions. And we can't deal with Christ based on our emotions. We can't deal with the Most High based on our emotions. We can't deal with the Most High if we don't deal with Christ. So the emotional person has got to be put away and to destroy. So the end result is you end up destroying a person, mainly yourself. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundant. So Yahushua came so that we can see how not to be like that. How not to destroy our own people because Christ didn't come to destroy. Okay, he came to save. That's what his name means. He saves. I am the good shepherd. See, he's a good shepherd. So how are we to be? We to be good shepherds. 
we grow and learn to be good shepherds. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Why do you think he said that? He said that so that we can understand what position we have to be. If he give his life for the sheep, what are we supposed to do? Then what are we being selfish for then? Why are we not denying ourselves? Why are we coming in doing what? Uh, stealing, killing, and destroying the flock of the Most High. That's all about self center It ain't that it ever was about the Most High. But he gave himself. He said he gave his life for the sheep. Check this out, verse 12. But he that is in Harlem and not the shepherd, whose own the shepherd or not, see the wolf coming and leave it the sheep and flee. The wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. That's an example of a person, a brother or sister that's not sincere. You give him the responsibility of watching the sheep, what do you do? See the wolf coming, trying to deliver himself instead of standing up for the sheep like a true shepherd was. A true shepherd is going to find something to beat the crap out of that wolf. But not somebody that's a hireling. You don't, you're not going to protect it like it's your own. You're not going to protect the sheep like you're responsible, like it's a given gift to you, like it's your own. And if it's a loss inside the sheepfold, then it's a loss inside of you. And that's how we're supposed to be amongst our people. We're not supposed to come into the congregations that the Most High put us in and be destructive. Be self, we'll do what we want to do. Now that's a hard one right there. He's only in it for one thing, money. Me being a contractor, I know exactly what Christ is talking about. On a corner state in this world, I would hire people to do all types of things. I've done everything. Everything from heavy construction to building banks, schools, hospitals, hotels. I mean, houses from the ground up, from a hole in the ground, you believe. To the point to where I've hired out. And I've always learned that when people, when you hire, the only thing they're concerned about is getting paid. They don't concern about whether they do it in a timely fashion because it's costing you money. They will milk you dry. So you might be like, well, what does that have to do with what Christ is talking about? It's got everything to do with it. Because if, I'm, if it's my house, if it's my building that I'm working on, I want to get it done as fast as I possibly can. I want to be efficient, cost efficient. I want to not end up upside down. I don't want to burn up materials. I want to do everything that I possibly can. But somebody that's just there to get paid, they don't give a damn. It's the language. They don't care. How much waste they have, they don't care. And if they get very little done, at the end of the day, what are they looking for? They're hiring. So that's how we can be like that when it comes to being a shepherd and the sheep of the, of the house of Israel. Now we gotta have a care for the people to where we invest our life in it and we in it for the long haul. And everything that we do, we know and understand, and it's a reflection. And I've got to be an example in this truth. I've got to do it because I've got people that depend on me. And that's how we serve the Most High in Christ. Not like a hireling. Verse 13. The hireling flee because he is a hireling. And care not for the sheep. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. And am known of them. I'm sorry, and am known of mine. So, all the ones that getting it right, they know Christ, and Christ knows them. They know what's right, and they know what's not right. Verse 15, as the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Listen what the Lord said. He said he's not running away from the sheep. He's not going to abandon the sheep because he cared for the sheep. Neither should we abandon what? Our responsibilities, our duties. There's nothing in this truth that the Most High gave to us will we ever abandon. 
Because we love what? Ourselves or the sheep? The sheep. A man that's lover of himself don't always think of him. himself. Not the sheep. He's a lover of himself. And if he loves himself, then Satan's going to come in through that pride and deceive him. And he's going to abandon the sheep. Okay, verse 16. It says, And other sheep have I which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. And they shall be one fold. Okay, and one shepherd. So yes, Christ was speaking how Israel that wasn't around at that time was going to hear the voice of him. But we're going to go and later we're going to get an example of how people hear the voice of Christ. And that's what truly makes them to believe. Because in sincerity, when they want, when after making the commitment, they hear the voice. Therefore do my father love me because why? I lay down my life. So why, what will make the most I love us? For us to lay down our life. Okay. What does laying down your life consist of? Taking the self-willedness out and seek the pleasing of the Father in heaven and the Savior of Israel to continue the work that he had gave, given unto us. It says that I might take it again. How is he going to take it? Meaning eternal life. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. So everything that Christ did, and he did it willingly. Nobody had to gainsay him. Nobody had to convince him. Nobody had to use trickery to get Christ to do the right thing. Everything that the Savior did, he did it because he wanted to. And he knew that it was the right thing to do. And that's how we should think. Because the Most High put us in the same circumstance that he put Christ in, which is to minister unto his people. Because that's who the people belong to. They belong to the Most High. And then the Most High gave them to Christ. So now Christ trusts us and put them in our hands. What are we supposed to do? Abandon them like a heart, like a hireling? No, we're not supposed to abandon them. We're supposed to give our life and everything about our life. That means everything that you propose, hey, put that down. Okay. Let's jump down to verse 27. Says my sheep are my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So, brothers and sisters of Israel, we're supposed to hear the scriptures, and we're supposed to hear the voice of Christ that's coming in the scriptures, regardless of who's speaking the word of the Most High. As long as they coming out the scriptures, and and, and it's the, the the will of the Most High and the doctrine teaching that the Most High had left to Christ and Christ gave to his apostles to distribute amongst the children of Israel, then we should hear that and we should what do what? Repent at the forsaking of those and the abandoning of those things. And I give unto them eternal life. So when we hear the voice of Christ, what is that going to lead to? That's going to lead to eternal life. And they shall never they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hands. Okay. So, St. John. And when is St. John? Go to the fourth chapter. Disciples pray him, saying, Master, eat. 
But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. So Christ, they figured he was hungry, it had been a while, and said, Master, eat. He said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore, the disciples said one to another, Now, many men brought him up to eat. It's like, did somebody bring him something to eat? And we didn't see it. So, so they were marveled over what he was saying and how he said it, that he had something to eat. And it made them kind of like curious. Yeah, I wish I said unto them, My meat is what? To do the will of him that sent me. And to finish his work. So, likewise with us. They were thinking about food, but Christ was like, no. The meat, the meat that I have, it's a big job. It's to do the will of him that sent me. So, the men of Israel, sisters too, all Israel, that's, that's our job that we got set before us. And that's to do the will of him that sent us. But first, we got to understand that if you sitting and you taking the time out to hear these scriptures, let's, let's go after them and make our calling assured. Like, hey, this is the will of the God. That because we are listening to the scriptures and the Most High don't make mistakes. The Most High is calling Israel to repent of their sins and to follow his will. What is the will of the Most High? To return from the breaking of the laws okay, and repent, be born again, be filled with the Holy Ghost, walk in his ways and believe in his son Christ and be an example among your brothers and among your sisters and finish, finish the work. Verse 35. Say, say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. So in the time of the harvest, the wheat will turn a certain color to let you know that it's ready to be reaped. So Christ said, no, don't look at the harvest. Don't look for that and be like it's ready. Because he wants them to look at another type of harvest. Because we may be like, oh, it's nothing to do. It's nothing to do. It's something to do. The harvest is ready. He said in what, Luke 10? The harvest truly is ready. So the harvest is ready. Verse 30. Six, and he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth food until eternal life. They both he that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. So what does that mean? That means that the Most High will not forget your labor of love. The things that you do, where you have. Like he said in, in John 10, where you, you uh, lay down your life for the sheep. And I know that these precepts, that are, <laughs> the, the paragraph is two inches wide and precepts are one eighth of an inch thick. And it might not describe the life that you have to give up, being so small of a word. But it's a weighty matter because there is power in words. There are meanings and force behind words. So you reap, you're going to receive wages. You gather fruit unto eternal life. You're doing what it takes to receive eternal life. That's having true brotherly love. To lay down your life and tend to the ones that that's ready, but they need help. And not be selfish because you feel that, hey, you know a little bit or you have a little bit. Everything that you know and have is because who gave it to you or allowed you to have it. Is it not the most, huh? 
So the most I don't want Israel to think upon those things. He want us to think about the harvest because it's ready. Continuing in verse 36, it says both that he, that both he that sow it and he that reap it may rejoice together. So who is that that sow it? First and foremost, it's the most high that sow it. Now it's time for us to do what? To reap. Verse 37, it says, And herein is that saying true, one sow it and another reap it. I sent you to reap that wherein ye bestowed no labor. Other men labor, and ye are entered into their labors. So his brothers and sisters, his brothers that's teaching the word of the most high. All over. One man's plant, another man water. So all we have to do is constantly and continually to feed the people. We're not taking care of the people. It's not your sole responsibility. It's Christ that died for those people. It's Christ that died for the children of Israel. So and so, they have some form of contact with their God. He is their creator as well as our creator. All we have to do is go forth and continue to pick up where other men have left off. What men? Jesus Christ and his apostles. But we have to receive that. We have to humble ourselves to that. St. John 5, verse 30. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which which I sent me. So Christ said he called it like he see it. And all the judgment, everything that he hear, everything that he's going to evaluate, he's going to bring into the judgment, and the judgment is just. And he's going to do the will of his Father which is in heaven. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. What does that mean? That means that in the sight of men, if Christ starts explaining and justifying himself, men don't want to hear that. Who is it we're trying to save? Men. So what about us? Why is it the children of Israel by record and witness of themselves? If you ask every man, he's pure. You ask every, man, every woman, she's righteous. Well, let's see how Christ dealt with it. Verse 32. It says, there is another that bear witness of me, and I know that witness which he witnessed of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear record unto the truth. But I received not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye may be saved. So, if Christ is saying that he didn't receive the testimony from man, and he's trying to say these things that we might be saved. The Lord and Savior is trying to tell us that the testimony that is going to justify us or the witness that's going to that's going to make any person true is going to be the testimony and the witness of your own actions. And not uh, wanting to be 